If you are interested in pursuing a psychology degree or if you find yourself smack in the middle of one, I think that it's important to first and foremost know exactly what you're getting yourself into. In today's video, I would like to go over some key elements that make psychology majors hit a little bit differently. Starting off with number one, info-packed lectures. Now, what I mean by this is not necessarily that psych classes have a lot of info in them, but in my personal experience, psych professors tend to go on a lot of tangents. Laughed, talked, danced. I never wanted it to end. <laughs> I guess I still don't. A bit too many if you ask me. And so it can feel very overwhelming or confusing if you are the type of student that come to class with a blank sheet of paper and without having done the readings beforehand. Now, what I recommend that you do, and this is gonna make your life a whole lot easier, is to at least come with the structure of the chapter written down. As the professor talks, you just grab the elements of his lecture and put them in the appropriate space. Number two, there is always going to be a better answer. One thing that makes psych tests particularly extra is the options of your answers for multiple choice or even for, you know, long answer exams. They can be quite subjective. I have seen so many, all of the above, none of the above, three out of four are correct. This is less true than, this is more true than. So unfortunately, I'm not so proud I'm going to say this, but it will help you score high on psych exams. Always write down or select the answer that your professor believes to be the most true or the best. This is about evidence and the truth. <laughs> and then you just said to him, the truth is what I say it is. <laughs> Number three, you cannot escape the stats. If you hate statistics as much as me, I'm sorry to say, but they are essential when you are pursuing a psychology degree because you are going to inevitably have to do research. I don't even want to tell you how many times I've seen students write a full-blown 50-page paper to then at the end have everything discredited and get a big fat zero because the articles they selected and they used as the basis for their arguments were statistically flawed or biased. Do not skip the methodology section. Do not skip the stats portion of the research papers that you end up selecting or relying on for your arguments they can make or break you. So try to get into the habit of quickly scanning over the numbers and the graphs to make sure that whatever you are reading is sound, makes sense, like I said, is not biased, and the numbers add up. Number four, it's harder to practice than most majors. Psych tests are subjective. So how do you know what type of questions to ask yourself if the answer is kind of dependent on what your teacher thinks. If you are going to remember anything out of this video, please remember this. If you want to be successful when studying psychology, when you're a psych major, you need to work hard and develop something that I can best describe as creative knowledge. I'll give you an example. I do not have mathematical creativity. I learn a formula, I can recognize when I have to apply it, and that's it. If the example deviates in any way, my brain cannot think, oh wait, I can, if I switch this around, then I can apply this formula and it's gonna give me a better answer or a faster answer. I do not have that type of math whiz. For psychology, you need to develop this type of innate spontaneous way of applying and using the material in creative ways. A way you can do that is to try as best as you can to use what you learn in class in your everyday life. And you are more likely to have that creative spark that is so important, especially in psychology internships, okay? Number five, humanizing disorders help a lot. One thing that I really didn't like about my 
psychology program was the fact that the human element was completely sucked out of my diploma. I cannot tell you how valuable being an intern in a mental health hospital helped me as a psych student. Once you see someone with ADHD, once you see the actual live in front of you symptoms of schizophrenia and how it changes a person, you are so much more likely to understand the material, do better in your exams, but also have, you know, my previous point that psychology creative knowledge that is going to intuitively come to you when you see those disorders or what you've learned into action in real life. We do not live in silos, right? They interact. There's a lot of comorbidities and you are more able to understand this if you put a face to a disorder. If you don't have access or if you cannot have an internship, the luxury of an internship, just Google it. Watch a few documentaries. I cannot tell you when we were studying anorexia how many documentaries about anorexia I watched. Number six, study sessions also hit differently. It took me way, way, way too long to figure out that one individual cannot read six textbooks of 500 and plus pages each. It is physically impossible. You are going to burn yourself out with just reading. And shall I remind you that just reading passively is not studying. You have to add studying on top of that. There are so many apps or websites out there that offer textbook summaries. What I used to do at the end of my degree was I used to split the readings with my friends. Someone did chapter one through seven, I did 20 to 35, and then we just compiled our notes, made a little perfect binder, and everything was ready. Divide the workload so you can actually focus on studying your notes and not just making them. Contradicting or clashing info. You will find that a lot of the theories or important psychologists presented in your abnormal psych class are also presented in your personality psychology class, in your social psychology class. There will be duplicated information but if you don't keep in mind that point number two, that your answer is going to be correct and you will get top marks if you understand what professor values what concept over the other. Sometimes your social psych teacher loves Jung and doesn't like Freud and your abnormal psych teacher loves Freud and doesn't care about Jung. If you manage to stay till the end, I have a bonus tip for you. And this I'm hoping every single psych student drills down in their freaking head. Listen closely. As a psych student, as a psychology practitioner, prioritize your patient and not your own beliefs. I have seen so, so, so many psychology students have at it over what treatment or what school of psychology of, is best. CBT all the way, psychoanalysis is for pussies. It's okay to have a preference. It's okay to specialize. Actually, you have to specialize. But when you go in to your therapy sessions, please listen to your patient. Always go in with what does your patient think? What does your patient believe? Because if they don't believe in the treatment you're trying to sell them, even if it's the good one, it will not work. They will not do the exercises. They will neglect coming to see you. Keep an open mind when it comes to psychology. That's all I can ask and that's all I can recommend.